last talk of the day, so you're not allowed to ask any questions unless you buy me a beer afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. That was the test of whether you understood me, because anybody did not laugh. <laughs> so what am I going to talk about uh, this afternoon or this evening? Uh, I'm going to talk about what is in uh, Flash Coast 9.2, and I'm going to talk about what happens next. So, Postgres 92 was released in. So I've got the now, if you want to put it on. It's going to be a one problem block. Uh, so, Postgres 9.2 was released in September uh, of this year, and I'm going to talk about some of the uh, features that are in there. Uh, but I'm going to talk about it from a, a different perspective uh, than other people, so this is my own personal uh, viewpoint. So, um, Number two is a better cloud database. It's a better database for developers, and it's also a better enterprise database. And I'm going to show you the features that uh, make me say those things. So it's a better cloud database uh, in these ways. Now I'm saying this in a way that is, is different to what is in the release notes. If you look at the release notes, it says, oh, there's this feature, and this feature, and it's hard to understand what that actually means. Okay? So I'm trying to interpret technical speak for you into, into a better understanding. So there's a number of features that improve CPU performance. So some of your applications will go faster. Things like data loading will go faster. Uh, read only operations will go faster. In the cloud, there is improved disk uh, performance. So we've implemented group commit in a better way, uh, and that means that on, on quite poor disk subsystems, we may get something like a 300% performance improvement with 9.2. So there's big performance improvements in 9.2. Uh, we also have reduced power consumption. Now, what does that mean? If the database is running a query, then we use exactly the same amount of power. But if the database goes quiet, there's nothing happening, then the power consumption bit is now dramatically lower. Because in 9.1, you would wake up many times per second to check things. Whereas in 9.2, it sleeps. All of it sleeps. All the different parts of it go to sleep at different times. So if you're using virtual databases and virtual operating systems, then your power consumption will be greatly reduced, massively reduced uh, for many parts of the day. So the cost savings that you'll get from running Postgres is going is to cost significantly less to use this uh, in the cloud and elsewhere. Network bandwidth is reduced as well uh, because we've implemented cascading replication. The purpose of this is when we send data for backup uh, to uh, different parts of the world, we only need to send one copy now rather than two or three copies. And as a result, that is going to lead to significant savings in your network transfer. Yeah. Okay. So these are important things that you can go and tell uh, the man that runs the finance in your company, we're saving you more money. This is, these are not technical things, they're uh, very important aspects uh, that we're taking care of. <coughs> Improved security. Uh, we've implemented uh, features to allow views to be link proof. So you can actually have what's known as security barrier views uh, that will allow you to protect your uh, data better than before. So that's just. Uh, First few things. It's then a developer database. Uh, Craig described some of these aspects, so I'll just skip over the ones that he already mentioned. He mentioned JSON, he mentioned range data types, uh, he mentioned index access. What uh, I think Craig uh, uh, said about SPGIS, the importance of it is that it allows much faster spatial data access. And that is particularly important uh, for geographic queries. Uh, and the uh, many location-based services now wish to know where is the nearest restaurant or how 
how do I get from here to here? So geographic query is particularly important now. Okay? So yes, it's very specific to that data type, but it's uh, a very important data type nonetheless. Uh, there's many optimizer improvements that developers will like, uh, but there's also a capability to analyze poor performing SQL that wasn't there previously. Uh, so that's particularly important, something called BG stat statements. Uh, but there's also something that's hidden uh, in there. There's a very strange description of this one in the uh, release notes. Uh, and that is that uh, when a query has been planned, if the query has been prepared ahead of time, then what we do under the covers uh, is that we re-plan the query. So what happened before was you compiled the query with a particular plan, and then you provided it with parameters, and sometimes this would cause a bad plan. This would cause slow SQL. Now what we do now is we recalculate the plan for each parameter, okay? and that means that bad plans are going to be significantly reduced. We're not going to see as many bad plans as we've got before. Okay? So that's particularly important. that other people have made uh, a lot of, uh, of 
conventional. Uh, but index only scans, um, personally, um, I don't think that will be very useful for you. Um, index only scans are good, but they only work efficiently on read only data. And most of our applications, except in the data warehouse, are not read only. And so the amount of benefit we'll get from this is, is reduced. But there are some other interesting things. Uh, alter table optimizations, for example. If you do alter table and you change some of the data types in the table, those now are extremely quick op operations. We're able to detect when uh, the data type doesn't need changing. That was uh, an extraordinarily complex piece of work that hardly anyone's noticed is there. But for if you're running a big database, they make, they make interesting, uh, uh, interesting read. Um, there's uh, another thing that isn't even in the release notes, which is that replace table now works. So if you truncate a table and you reload it with data, uh, then uh, people can continue to access that data. At line one, that would have just given you an error. So there's some interesting things that are on the research. So what's happening next? Well, 9.3 is under development now. And so that will become available next year in 2013. What's already there? Well, there's something called lateral. Um, I've looked at that two or three times and I still don't know. Is. Uh, all, all I know is it's something to do with our compatibility. What is useful is event triggers. We will be able to create a trigger that executes each time a table gets created or something. And there are many, many uses for that type of uh, feature. We've improved group commit again. Uh, we found another way of improving the performance. So your disk I.O. will be improved again. Uh, there's uh, a very important feature called config directories. Uh, now, much of the uh, configuration of large groups of servers uh, uses things like Chef or Puppet. Uh, and with those uh, systems, you, uh, it's, it's better to set up configuration that uses multiple configuration files. So instead of just one postgresql.conf that you edit by hand, you can actually set up, you can chop that into pieces and have your configuration determined by something like Puppet much more easily. Uh, so that will make a big difference uh, as well. Uh, what do we hope we'll get in? Well, uh, there's a patch uh, that I'm reviewing which will allow us to get fast failover. Why does that matter? Because at the moment you can get something like 99.99% uh, availability or what we call four nines availability. To get the fifth nine, we need to fail over faster. And that will give us five nines availability. Logical replication is something that we're working on. Uh, there's a lot of work going into that. Uh, and I'll I've got a few slides to explain uh, what that is. Uh, there's uh, a big, very big patch uh, based around the idea of uh, foreign key lock reductions. Uh, that's likely to go in. We've got improvements for extensions. Uh, somebody's finally got around to writing re-index concurrently. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a locked timeout feature going in as well. Uh, and there's also a new <coughs> capability which is to allow background workers. This is basically a program that you can write that, like a daemon that runs inside Postgres. Uh, so if you want to write a job scheduler or some other program uh, that manipulates things within Postgres, you can now do that. Uh, there's some work on data block checksums uh, that uh, may go in, not sure, um, but it will come eventually. And 
there's another feature, cotton frames, that uh, will speed up uh, laser lighting. So that's what, uh, what we're working on at the moment. It's November now, we've got basically two more months before uh, post grace development closes, and then we wait for the summer for the beta to come out. Uh, but next year, 9.3 will be available. Um, so, uh, Craig uh, mentioned in his talk, one of the interesting things about uh, Postgres is the momentum that the project has. And the annual release cycle, every year we bring out something new, something original, something useful for people every year. Uh, and that is very interesting. Something that you can tell uh, the uh, boss of the company that this is not just something that's good now, it's something that's getting better. <coughs> What's happening in 9.4? Uh, we're going to have partitioning. We're going to have data loading improvements. Uh, we're likely to have low level security. I've marked that for 9.4. There's some patches in 9.3. It might get there earlier. Um, we can have uh, better automated testing, uh, so basically uh, an, in, uh, an improvement in uh, the robustness of the server. Uh, we are working on uh, distributed multi-master, um, and some of that will be in 9.3, some of it will be in 9.4. And we're likely to see the auto-vacuum demon also do auto re-indexing. So, uh, what does distributed multi-master mean? Well, at the moment, we have the capability... Has this got a laser point on? So, what we have at the moment is uh, the capability for single master and multiple standby servers uh, to form a cluster. What we're working on is the idea of multiple masters all working together. So, for example, if we have a server in Buenos Aires, a server in London, a server in Hong Kong, a server in Sydney, uh, this would uh, allow us to implement completely worldwide uh, applications. Why is that important? Because as a business grows, uh, we have customers in many parts of the world, and those customers need access to local data, telecommunications data, website data, many different applications fall into this category. So it's not replication then becomes something that isn't just for backup and recovery uh, or data protection, it's actually distributed data access. Um, so I have uh, this actually comes in uh, for many different applications. For example, uh, we're working with one customer that's got a very large uh, user base in Brazil, uh, but they also have a large user base in Europe. And uh, the, the, the needs of those customers are slightly different in each place, but they need the data copy. So this will allow you to uh, read from the database from any point. It will allow you to update the database from any point. Okay? Obviously, if you update in two places at once, then you will have a problem. Uh, so we are going to have mechanisms for conflict avoidance in the first, but also conflict resolution when they do occur. Uh, the technology that we're working on now is logical replication. So it's based upon uh, logical change data. Previously, when we worked on physical replication, we had to replicate the whole database. Whereas now, we're able to send the changes. Very much like a slow meme or long beast or Ricardo, but actually, we're doing this much more efficiently. It looks at the moment, like it's at least four times faster than uh, logical replication, possibly more. But what we're going to be able to do is implement uh, 
filtering of changes, we're going to be able to defer those changes, we're going to be able to implement sharded databases. So you don't need to move all of the data, you move some of the data in one database, some in another, uh, and you don't need to move things across. And also what that's going to give us in the long run is major release upgrades all online. So what we want to be able to do is just say, you're running 9.3, you'd like to run 9.4, so just upgrade. And then we'll have a 9.3 database talking to a 9.4 database for long enough for it to be upgraded as well. Okay? So we're then moving to very high availability, both while the system is executing and across upgrades. Okay? That's, that's a key point. That's what you have five lines of availability if you have to take the thing down for a little to upgrade. So, uh, then I've got some other things uh, to talk about. Uh, I'm not really sure which release they're going to be in, but I can tell you some of the things that are happening. So we have lock reductions. Um, the PostgreSQL project often is slow to react to things happening uh, in the industry. One of the key things that's happened in the last few years is NoSQL, and particularly what we refer to as uh, schemaless database bases. The reason that I think that people have begun using schemaless databases is that it's not sensible to do things like alter table, add seven columns if you've got a large production system. So in order to be able to do those things, we need to make all of the DDL operations uh, have the weakest possible block. So to reduce the impact of executing those things. So we have to, we have to move forward with that in the next few years. I'm not sure when, but uh, it's actually a challenge I've tried to do already uh, and failed uh, because it's much more complex even than I thought of to begin with. Um, we're going to get autonomous transactions uh, which will allow uh, auditing uh, of uh, statements that succeed and statements that fail, and it will also give us better auditing as well. Uh, materialized views. We're talking about that. Um, and the last one is uh, this Nirvana, uh, which is a scalable auto sharding database. Okay. It's going to take a while to get those things into uh, Postgres, but we know the direction we're going in uh, and we've got uh, all of the things we need to get there. So, from where we are now, Postgres is going to get smaller. It's going to go onto micro devices. And it's also going to get bigger. We're going to be able to manipulate tens or possibly even hundreds of terabytes of data using Postgres. The idea uh, that I have is that all of those databases are going to be consistent. It's going to be Postgres everywhere, whether it's small or very large. All of those things will be able to be connected. Um, it's all going to be secure. Uh, but then on top of that, uh, we're improving the ease of use. So we've got the consistency of if you program a uh, Postgres database on uh, a smartphone, it will be the same program that you can run against a very large database. Uh, this is very important. And of course, uh, the last thing is low cost. I like to say free because uh, there's always uh, some costs associated with usage. But it's important to understand that we're going for both big data and micro devices at the same time, so going in different directions. So uh, how is uh, all of this possible? Well, the first thing that you need to do uh, in order to go on a journey is to decide where you're going. 
So this is what this presentation is about, is showing you that we have vision to take us to places that we are not currently at. Um, we need to set ambitious goals for ourselves. We can't just say, oh, we will make this very small change, because that impresses nobody. We need to have a positive attitude, uh, which means when people tell you that you're wrong and you're stupid and your idea isn't worth having, uh, we go, okay, I see why you say that. Uh, thank you for that. Um, or words similar. Um, we need uh, an attention to simplicity so that we're not implementing things uh, that have too many uh, parameters. It needs to be as simple as possible. If you look at what we did with synchronous replication, we managed to get synchronous replication in one parameter, uh, one new parameter. Uh, and that's the type of uh, simplicity that we need to, uh, to use when we approach uh, the future. Um, there's a couple of other things there. Sense of urgency. Okay? Sometimes uh, people go, oh, it's okay, we'll do it in the future release. But if you look at the number, virtually every time we say we'll do it in the future release, about four years later, we still haven't done it. Okay? So the time to do everything is uh, you know, as soon as possible. I was going to say now, but it's not always possible to do everything now. You need a plan. You need a, a plan for execution. And that plan needs to include funding, because it's all very well to talk about this stuff, uh, but if there's no money involved, it's kind of impossible to, uh, to do so. The way I like to say is, um, it's like crossing a desert. If uh, you can walk across the desert as long as you have a can of water with you. If you forget the water, you won't get to the other side of the desert. So funding is a critical aspect of what we do. Um, and just to say that uh, you know, the where that comes from is that uh, the second quadrant is business uh, and we make money from books and training and, uh, but ultimately from, uh, from customers. So the more people that, uh, that use Postgres, uh, the more people uh, you know, are able to have to find what we're, what we're trying to do. But the important thing here is it's not just second quadrant, it's lots of companies working together are able to, uh, to bring this about. Uh, now, wherever we go in the world, uh, people feel, oh well, it's all happening somewhere else, nothing happening here. Yeah. Uh, but that's just, that's just the internet, because wherever you are in the world, there's the whole world is somewhere else. Yeah? So everywhere I go, there's a room full of people just like yourselves, all of whom are thinking, how can I contribute, or possibly, I'm just a user, I, you know, I don't contribute, um, but you can contribute. Um, you can file by reports, um, you can get involved with organising uh, local meetings. Um, thank you very much uh, for organising this. I think um, uh, that alone uh, deserves uh, Round of applause to uh, the, the uh, organisation team uh, for today's event. So, if I can just say. Um, and the last thing to mention is that uh, we're actually translating uh, some of the Postgres books into Spanish. Uh, so that we'll be able to uh, uh, get a uh, better understanding of uh, things directly in Spanish. And again, what's happening is we're trying to widen the user base of Postgres to go worldwide. Uh, that's in terms of the number of people using it and the number of ways that they use it. So I hope I've given you a, a flavour for the next few years in Postgres. Um, 
We have not run out of ideas yet. There's a lot more coming. Okay? So uh, watch this space. Sounds like a long time, but these things come quicker than you think. So. Two beers I've got. <laughs> and more, two beers is not enough. Okay, well, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, good to see you. And uh, hopefully I'll come again uh, in future years. So, so, thank you.